Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Hitbox Storm Grounds Invitational. This is game number two of our semi-finals. I am Tetcher. I am joined by Four Court Jester. We are Four Court Tetcher, and we're here to rock your <laughs> world tonight at the Royal Albert Hall. But no, we're here to cast Navi versus Rocket, and we are in the draft. All right, so game number one was a very convincing win there by Natus Vincere. Just a ridiculous kind of Illidan comp, you know, paging Dr. Trixler. Where was he? He's going to just regret not seeing all those hunts. But uh, <laughs> beautiful hunts they were. And into game number two is going to be the Dragonshire and Navi first banning Johanna. Yeah, and Rockat responding with the fairly more standard Zeratul ban. And that does mean Navi instantly I'm going to be picking up the Jaina. And uh, it's actually the same bands and the same pick sequences as last game so far. Now, are we uh, going to see no, it like. Isn't. We Jaina was first banned last time and Johanna was picked up by Rocket. Alright, well, same picks, different order. <laughs> <laughs> good point, though, good point. Uh, so, will we see like another double warrior dive comp on Dragonshire? Not entirely sure that we won't. I don't. It's not too bad of a pick, especially seeing as the map is smaller, so Illidan can pretty much hunt from anywhere on the map and still get someone without the level twenty talent. It's not also. It's just not about uh, the Illidan in this case. It's more about just the defend the point mentality, the the survivability yeah. mentality. Frail glass cannons, solo defending points don't typically last that long, but they are very good at raiding points, which can work out in their favor, but the Jaina, already a good choice on this map. Those blizzards, especially if you take the Snowstorm talent, which is pretty meta nowadays, can just annihilate those shrines if someone decides to camp them. And, you know, Team Rakas so far is going to get on that survivability train once more, just kind of prioritizing uh, Mirrodin. Yep. We've been two, seeing two. a lot of Mirrodin like, as first pick warriors. Yeah, yeah, we have, especially when Johanna is, about, is uh, burned out. Choo-choo, all aboard the tank train. And uh, last time we did see a second pick of a support in this case, and it was by Na'Vi, where they picked up yeah, the Uther. Uther as their second pick. Will Rocket go a similar line? Nope, they grabbed the Kael'thas. Yeah, they cannot, they absolutely cannot afford to let the Kael'thas, Jaina, Sylvanas combo, for example, uh, kind of roll out from Natus Vincere. Yeah, that would so, be a little bit insane. Yeah, it, it kind of would. I mean, the range aspect of the mages, as you said, they're not great for sitting on points, but they're just really good at raiding those. And all the range increases and all of just the damage outputs are kind of ridiculous. So uh, it's a good pickup there from Rokath. This is where Natus Vents here really get to show their colors. What kind of comp are we about to see? Well, there's a Zagara. We've been seeing her a lot today, just been consistently amazing. And there is the Uther being picked up as well, so it looks like they want that kind of burst style comp with Zagara into the more and then dropping all of their abilities onto whoever else and stealing the Uther away denies that survivability for saving someone just as they come out of the more. So we expected a Zagara last time, we get her this round. I'm curious if uh, we're actually not going to see a Volstead if, uh, because we already got that Zagara now out there. So. Jaina Zagara, that's um, that is quite the combo right there. As you said, you know, Ma deny it could even be a storm for the Wombo into the Blizzard. You never know on on Dragonshire, sir. Very true, indeed. It is the ban phase now for Rocket, and now they have pretty much everything they need. They do not have a warrior yet, so Rocket could ban one of those out, limit their options, ban out the Anubarak, for example. Jaina out, Mirrodin picked, Anubarak out, that would lead us into, well, you never there know. <laughs> there, all right, well, so the Anubarak ban out, <laughs> Natus Vincere, Arthas? So options, Arthas? Tyrael, Tyrael? ETC, Arthas, maybe not Diablo nowadays. <laughs> we had a first big Diablo in my Hero League the other day, we just all collectively laughed as a team. <laughs> as, yep. long as, as long as you didn't take the mic. Diablo is just, I don't know, he's just not there. That rework kind of really put I him know. down. I play him like Murky nowadays. I run like the reduced the reduced souls needed for revive and the passive soul gaining. Yeah. And I just play him like a Murky because if you play him like that, he always has 60 souls. So no matter when he dies, he's coming right back. Like kind of interesting to think about, yeah. yeah. If you take the level 20, when you die, you drop an apocalypse. 
<laughs> you can actually just continuously run into a fight. And Mercablo, Mercablo Murky Father Son Dive Team. Uh, <laughs> why? Why haven't I got the Murky, the Mercablo skin yet? I have to do that now. Fail, Tetch, fail. All right, okay, no, well, I have no, another no, video. Here. I have another video to do. And yeah, Tarande <laughs> banned out by the team of Na'Vi. So, Rockat, if they wanted to, they could, in theory, pick Tyriel or someone like that for themselves, run Double Warrior, and really limit Na'Vi's options. Well, I think the, the, the Tyranda ban is from Nadison Sincere is really just kind of targeting that melee. And, you know, Team Rokat, yeah. if they can't... We did see a Butcher ban last time, so if these guys wanted to run that, uh, they, they clearly didn't prioritize the Butcher or Tyranda nearly enough. But not entirely too sure they would have gotten it anyways. So, you know, as I said, you can't give Navi the Kael'thas, Sylvanas, Kael, uh, and Jaina. But it will be two of the three there for Roka. They need to put up a support right here, I think. Uh, yeah, I'd say Roka could use support. But the question is, would Navi want to move into a double support here? So there's, it's unlikely, I think, they would steal anything away from Roka. Don't have any bands left. Because Navi do need their other tank. And they probably need something a bit more sustained in terms of damage. Or hmm. Tastan. Will we see a Vala? If, if there's not going to be any melees on both sides, and I'm not saying that there won't be, because Natus is uh, Natus still could absolutely do one. Uh, Vala is likely to get a pick up here, but there's Nazebo once more. Yeah, he's propped his head in quite a few times now, and that is a lot of potential damage on the side of Rock Hat. We have quite a bit of early game damage with Nazi Bow, with uh, just all his abilities, the extra spiders and stuff. Sylvanas with like the early game pushing, and then Kael'thas is basically their mid game main damage. So that's that's a pretty good uh, curve they have there. Nazebo is a solo laner. I mean, Zagar is just a bit safer because she can put out those creep tumors, but Nazebo as a solo laner is susceptible to uh, certain, certain ganks, especially early on with stun comps. Like if we get the problem is that we don't really have like a good stun comp here for uh, Navi. Like, there's no Nubarak that they can go into. Uh, it's just the Uther. The Tarenda was banned out. Johanna's not going to be there. Mirrodin was already picked up. Well, uh, if you want stuns, ETC might be your man, and he is available. It could be. It could be. Yeah. Very, very stun friendly indeed. How mosh pit friendly are we right now? Uh, there's Muradin and Kael'thas who can deny. Actually, pretty much everyone can deny except Nazibo. Wedding Arrow, Gravity Lapse, or uh, Hammer. Storm Divine Bolt. Storm into mosh? Maybe. <laughs> Quite possibly. Or mosh, or uh, devouring more into mosh. <laughs> oh, yeah, that, that could easily yeah, work here as see well. Who, see who's in it. <laughs> I'm all of a like... sudden liking ETC a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite it's quite possible. We, it's possible. There's a Tyrael, and they need either another damage dealer or Falstead. another warrior, or in that kind of sense, just someone extra tanky. I agree, Falstead would be pretty nice, especially seeing as how squishy everyone on Rocket is. Their assassins are so fragile. So they could I... go uh, Judgment so... uh, Pinsland. Here's a thought. Mm -hmm. We have both invulnerabilities on Navi. You think Divine Storm into Sank? No, Divine Shield into Sank. <laughs> Divine Shield, sorry, Divine Shield into Sank. It's possible. It is definitely possible, but uh, not too sure. If it is going to but... be Sank, it, it's almost likely to be oh, Storm. I think I know who I would. I know who I would pick here, and that is Butcher. Try and kill Butcher when he has Divine Storm, Divine Shield, sorry, and then Sanctification on him. Could that work? I've done it. Uh, only we didn't run Ufa. We ran, uh, we ran Brightwing with it. But the, on the day Butcher came out, I ran as Tyrael with Sank. Someone else ran as Brightwing. Someone ran as Damage Mouth. That was just taking the mick. But they're not going with it anyway. They're going to be running the Valor. Well, I did say that Valor is probably going to be uh, seeing some play. Now, I called False Dead, and there wasn't. I didn't call Zagar, and there was. Yay for sticks <laughs> and bands. But Rhaegar is the last pickup here from Rokat. Curious that it's not Malfurion. Yeah, that is quite interesting indeed. But the Rhaegar, a bit more burst heal, considering that there is a Tyrael on the side, so there's potential for that burst engage with Tyrael Judgment into Jaina burst damage and the potential Reign of Vengeance coming down from Valor. Hmm. All right. So what is Navi about to show us? They just showed us a hunt. Now they have both invulnerabilities under their belts. 
I don't, I don't think a divine is... storm sank could be I... a judgment shield could be any mix yeah. of the four yeah i don't i don't think it's going to be the sank as much as i would like it to be i don't think they have or need it there's not enough potential instant damage block that's on the side of rocket to warrant a sanctification i don't think like the worst like the best thing it could be used for is sanking a wailing arrow and doing that way just so that only Tyrael takes the silence uh, the observer needs to join the lobby. The only reason that I kind of bring up like the different builds is because we've now seen Illidan with Hunt. Like we saw yeah, a double dive with an Illidan that didn't take meta, and it worked out flawlessly. If Navi shows us something else, they're basically the two arc of Europe. Well, Navi have been the ones who have done these kind of creative builds in the past. They have done the. Like we said, they were the ones who ran Asmodan in quite a few tournaments. They ran it at DreamHack. They've run the Hunt Illidan a couple times nowadays. They are the ones who go with some of the interesting stuff. And interesting stuff makes them much more interesting games. Mm-hmm. All right, so they're trying the lanes, stuff. Uh, Natus Vincir, I mean, we've been seeing, I think, Roka, actually. No, it was alternate. They were ping-ponging between lanes. You could technically still ping-pong between lanes. This was the original map that uh, we kind of developed the strategy on, at least on the NA side of things. Is You go yep, four mid me. into four bottom, into four mid, into four bottom. Then, you know, by, usually by about the second or third creep wave, you're going to have the temples, uh, the shrine spawn, so you can you know, leave a contingent down there. If it is going to be something similar to that, I fully suspect it would be Zagara and Nazebo kind of dueling it out up top while the rest of everyone kind of fights for position down there. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty accurate. Zagara wants to be set up in a lane of her choice where she can get her creep down, and Nazebo is a good counter to that, as his spiders can actually reveal creep. Can they? If you uh, throw the, the pot the impact, it, yeah, the yeah, impact, the impact yeah. will show will show and do damage to the creep tumor, oh, and once good. it's been taken damage, it is revealed, so you can attack it and kill it. Not a very good use of spiders. <laughs> well, they're gonna they're gonna auto target into a lane anyway. It's very rare that you actually hit someone with the impact, so you reveal rare the creep. You, the maybe. spiders walk into the lane. <laughs> well, rare for any rare when you're against any kind of enemy who knows how to play and how to position. All right, <laughs> you win. Yeah. You win. So, uh, what's the status on Team Roka here? We are waiting for Hasawobs to ready up, and maybe someone else as well, because we still have the thing where the person in the middle is invisible. Tells you how many people are ready in the bottom. Uh, it does if you ready up, yeah, which I haven't done. Now it's 10 out of 10, it was just Hasawobs. So, 10 out of 10 players are readied up, and hopefully, the game will be starting very shortly. We're getting into game number two of Na'Vi versus Roka. We get the DLHFs, someone push the go button. Yeah, there yeah. we go. We're off. All right. Yeah, so okay. again, Dragonshire. It's game number two. If we do go into game number three, I believe it is Tomb of the Spider Queen. And that it is. All right. So at the very worst, we have one more map out of this, and uh, Navi with their special fun comps are uh, probably just going to revert to something a bit more normal. But at the best here. Navi on Dragonshire is going to show us exactly what a double invulnerability uh, potential can become. The only reason I keep bringing it up is like I don't think the judgment is going to get a huge amount of worth out of this. Yeah, there's no more. There's follow up to it in the sense that uh, you can just throw Jaina abilities onto it and do it that way. But oh, we will have to see. <laughs> Sorry. The the stream had windows show up for a minute. Okay, hello Windows. Welcome to the stream. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, sporting on the left-hand side, it is the blue team currently 1-0 up in this series. It is Na'Vi starting in the top lane. Playing the Valor, it is JPL. In the mid lane, there is no one. In the bot lane, playing the Tyriel, it is Breeze. Playing the Uther, it is Splendor. Playing the Jaina, it's going to be Eternal. And playing the Zagara. It's going to be Schwimpy, and on the right-hand side, it is the red team of Team Rocket, all grouped up in this mid lane top brush. It is going to be Chris playing the Kalefass, Soke playing the Muradin, Sport Billy dressed as a Reindeer Rhaegar, Shanome is playing the Sylvanas, and Hasawobs is playing the Nazibo. So, Vala immediately, I noticed, is going for the Q build with her Hungering Arrow. 
that is going to do her well because not only is she likely to be up on her own for a good part of this early phase, but she also has to try to get that temple. That yeah, shrine. she needs some that shrine. sustain and is going to be dueling with people. Unfortunately, she went from a 1v1 where she might have been able to get away with two or 2v1 and now her lane is getting wrecked. So she's going to get some help from what looks like Jaina and Uther. Jaina just bouncing back and forth. We're looking to see if she is going to go up. They're going to attempt to go up and grab a quick kill here. Val is very far forward, but Sylvanas and Nasibo already just hanging up by this shrine. Vala has vision of them, though. Infernal and Splendor waiting this out to see if they can grab it. Hasuobs is uh, Rokat, right? Hasuobs is, in fact, Rokat. Great. And just checking. Yeah, Infernal and uh, Splendor did uh, head out there, but Hasuobs and Shadow had already backed out, so they're not able to grab anything. Nice Ice Lance, though. Will do quite a bit of damage to Shadow Bear. He is forced to back up. Infernal and Splendor yeah. is going to make their way back to the mid lane. Tyrael, in the form of Breeze, is just currently dueling with Sokke. So it's interesting that uh, Rokau would actually go for a 2-1-2 mm. split. Yeah, but it is interesting. Uh, we did just see in the top lane, Nazibo just get picked off. Shadow Man taking a lot of damage as well. He will haunting wave away. Eternal not having his cooldowns up to get that pick. Oh, okay. so Shadow Man. I mean, just dancing with the devil at that point. Shrines are up and does look like it is... Uh... You know, blue top, and all we have to do now is kind of invade through Sake into the blue bottom. Schwimpy just, oh, he's having a heck of a time in that lane, isn't he? Yeah, but not having a good time at all. Sokka also having to fountain just to deal with the amount of harass he's been receiving in the mid lane. We're seeing Uther and Jada make their way to the bot lane. It's going to be a 3v3. Schwimpy already fighting Sport Billy here. Just throwing out auto attacks. In comes Chris. They want to try and get Shrimpy, but here's the surprise. It's a gank coming in from e and Spender, but really nice earth by Dotem there. Coming down from Rhaegar will prevent anyone going down there, but the shrine is almost definitely heading over to Na'Vi, but not without a fight. In comes Shadow Bear. Chris still matches up, looking for the opportunity. He finds Jada, drops a living bomb onto both Shrimpy and Jada, doing a lot of damage to support Billy. Took too much damage in the fight versus Splendor and is forced to back up. Breeze trying to take the Dragon Knight here, but Sokka still there, just preventing this from happening. Yeah, we do actually need to have a big rotation here mid to get Sake off the point there, for, there so we that we can cap it. And, well, all right, if that's going to be the cap, then uh, an early game dragon at three minutes. You're going to be good if Nata Sincere can actually pick up more than two towers. Yeah, well, they're trying at the moment, but Sake is making this very difficult as he keeps dropping his Thunderclap, which has the reverberation talent, which does, in fact, slow the auto attacks of the Dragon Knight. Making it, making it a bit slower in the push potential, but Maroodin did have to be, so he's not going to be able to help out with that anymore. Zagara's not picked her level 4 yet, and it's level 7. There we go. Pick some Venom Spines, and still needs to pick her level 7 talent. Uther also waiting his out a bit. So again, if you can get more than two towers with a really early dragon, then you're going to be flying already with that level advantage. Now Breeze into the top. Like, he's just absolutely wrecking that lane. During all the dragon fight, though, as well, Shadowmere did lose a 1v2 into the top. Valid with that kill uh, was absolutely impressive at the time as well. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Breeze, just be able to back out there. Now that the Dragon Knight has expired, the bot lane push was pretty effective while that Dragon Knight was distracting the side of Rocket. Five Navi towers. Let's continue to roam. Down goes Nazibo in the top lane to the Tyrael Valor. Five towers as a three minute dragon. Yeah. That's pretty nice. Yep, and you can see the, the immense level lead now already cracking. It's going to be level 9 to 7. Very likely it's going to be a 10 to 8 split. And uh, Navi feeling good about that. The dueling build from Vala has uh, done wonders for her. It is actually a battle momentum on Schwimpy as well. There are going to be roaches and banelings galore in that bottom lane. Yeah, JPL trying to once he takes out another, takes out Sylvanas again. He's just yep. wrecking this top lane. The dual build, he can two versus one, no problem at this point. Hunger well, it's not even two versus one. Hasuobs is almost never there for those yeah. duels. They're sort of tagging in and taking turns one versus one him and dying every time. And, and neither of them will live up to that Q build. Yeah, it's just like, all right, I just lost to him. Your turn. Yeah. One of these do is distract the referee and someone comes in with a chair. But it's not your turn. happening. But it's 0-2 for Sylvana, 0-0 zero, zero for He's going uh, in again. Asu. Yeah, JPL chasing Hasselwobs back to base. He has to fountain, but JPL having a couple mana problems, though, is going to back up here, wait for his mana to regen and not fight against Shadow Bear. Is here. Looks like they want to try and get a Kale Pass and Rhaegar both getting killed in the bot lane in that four versus two. And that fort is now under attack. Valor taking a lot of siege in this top lane, though. She has no mana to do anything about this. 
But in the meantime, her team will get this fort. Tyrael, making his way up to the top plane, he did take the judgment. Yeah, and it was the judgment. As soon as they hit 10, they judged the uh, water elemental, and that's why the 4v2 kind of worked out Ooh, so well. Oh, Vela! Yep, she's dead. She had no mana for Vault. Finally picked off by Sokke there. Yeah, nice, uh, nice wall. But you know, Breeze at the same time was able to take home again another kill on top of Sylvanas. So uh, bottom lane pressure has amounted to um, a ton. And now distracting three team members from Rokat into the top lane. This Vala is just, uh, you know, JPL is a god right now. Yeah, he has just been wrecking. He's currently four to one. And most of those kills were solo. <laughs> been doing such a fantastic job of just killing everyone here. And would like to point out that Vala has taken strength. As well, considering yep. there's quite a lot of stun on the side of Rockat, but Divine Shield is available, so she can basically drop full damage without too many issues. Well, uh, you know, the strafe, the, it's, they're feeling good. They're saying that, yeah, we can make this work. We got the level advantage, we got the positioning, a lot of kills. The, 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 the adrenaline is flowing, the good feelings are flowing, the team communication is clearly there, so yep. that's what you mid -lane, do. You take the mid lane needs to be careful, Valor. And Zagara out of position here. The Wailing Arrow does land on Zagara. She's able to back out, though. Judgment is on the Kale Fast. He gets annihilated. Vala gets stunned out of her strength, though. Does she have a way out? No, she doesn't. She does go down. So does Zagara. It's a two for two currently. The fight continues. Sokka having to jump out as he was taking a full Blizzard. Ancestral healing coming back off its cancel that it, uh, when he tried to heal Kale Fast does heal Sokke back up to full. He's still taking a Water Elemental to the face. In the meantime, Spender was split pushing top plane. Dragon that has expired. And now, with the help of Breeze, he will be able to get out. Now, remember, that was a 5 on 4, and Navi still traded evenly. I mean, they got so much work done on that top fort, it's now going to be low-hanging fruit. We don't have any kind of uh, mules sitting around. And uh, the power of Zagara is just going to keep pushing in. The power of Vala will just keep pushing in anybody that tries to push out with that dueling build. And it's always just a judgment away from death. So, like, the map pressure and the level advantage coming out from Navi is just phenomenal. Yep, and very defensive talents coming out of Na'Vi at the level 13 spell shield on the Valor and the Uther. Imposing will on the Tyrael, improved Icebox on the Jaina, and Sagara has, as usual, yet to pick. As usual? <laughs> That's, she has, she's been slow with like every talent level. There's a Mutalisk, finally. Yeah, Mutalisk makes a lot of sense. There's a lot of trees. Uh, the flying unit itself will give vision over the wall. So to speak, and um, so Nazebo, I wonder if we'll ever see Ravenous Spirit again. I think we will once uh, the whole stun met. Maybe a couple more stun defensive heroes can have come in, because right now it's just too much long range stun. Once the meta shifted a little. All right, well, fair. Uh, we'll have to keep a word on that. But it is uh, the double summons it is water elemental it is the gargantuan yeah, pretty... the only thing else i think you could really add to this is uh ultralisk but no kerrigans today uh the phoenix yeah. is going to be good for the zone denial but i'm not entirely too sure that's going to be enough to kind of deter navi with their immense lead that they've uh, they've been kind of occurring they've been no no cares going into some of these fights yeah like the only time they lost people there was that last fight where they basically took a bad angle and we're still able to get it. There they go, taking down the top four. They already grabbed mid earlier and bot went down way earlier. In the meantime, though, Rockat just going to go for some counter damage here, pushing this bot lane really hard with four members. Now Rhaegar's here, it's all five. But only four members here for Na'Vi. They're still going to go in, though. Breeze was poised for judgment there, but it got cancelled due to losing vision. <laughs> it's not, never good. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, losing yeah. vision is uh, definitely one of the worst things you can do for that judgment. But going yeah. into the top and showing everyone five, I mean, Rokat definitely doing the better, uh, the better of the trades because they finally Ooh, you know, got a big time. Nazi bow, ancestral healing keeps him alive. More has been used. And yeah, ancestral healing kept him alive for about two seconds until judgment happened, and the dragon knight just punted Sokke right into his, his own team's backline, and because of that. Eternal almost going down, Flame Strike does not land, and Sokke does go down. That was almost pretty disastrous from Splendor there, but his team does survive, and now they are pushing down after getting three kills, pushing into the base of Rockat. Oh, well, the top four is down, mid is down, and just nobody else to deal with that dragon. Now with a 5-on-5, five five, if you thought it was good with a 4v5, now with a full pressure Shadow Mare, I mean, like... She's done. And uh, the sweet spot is is very real. 17 to 14 as it's going to go into it. And the first keep here at the 10 minute mark. Navi's in fantastic form just to finish this off as a 2-0. 
Yeah, and talent choices from their level 17. So we have Holy Ground coming in from the Tyrael, just giving them a bit more area control and just control of where the fight happens. And the Numbing Blast coming in from the Jaina. Hmm, Numbing Blast for the Roots. Uh, it's basically just going to be a big catch-up count. Like, we can then allow Vala to kind of walk into the range. Uh, the Banelings, for example, you can't dodge them. Uh, the uh, Roach is on your head. You know, if you get a really good Numbing Root, that also could lead us into a fantastic Maw. Very true. Very true indeed. But now, though, Na'Vi just owning the map. They're grabbing bot bruisers. They're looking to raid into this easy camp. The entirety of Rocket are here. And there is a flame strike, but it's a level 14 flame strike, not even 15, let alone 16. So no ignite yet. And they'll be easily able to raid that in a three versus five and steal that easy camp. And that is now three sets of mercenaries pushing in the bot lane of Rocket and Navi. They're moving down the mid lane to force this split defend. Yeah, the split defend is just not going to be Ooh, doing any, any work. Oh, he's fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he was uh, he was locked out. I thought he was fine, but he just held him and smited out. Yeah, three sets of mercenaries into the bottom lane is just absolutely you know, yeah. massive amounts of push. The mid now push it pushing in very well here from Navi. Rakat is uh, basically stuck between a rock and a hard place at this point. Yeah, a lot of a lot of uh, flame strikes being absorbed by Navi here. Really lucky that there's no 16 to deal with it. There we go. Sylvanas finally dealing with those mercenaries in the bottom lane. But in the meantime, Navi just stole another bruiser camp in the top lane. I mean, when you're this far ahead, Navi getting every single Merc camp should not really be too much of a surprise. I mean, there's no map control because there's no forts. We got those consistent catapult pressure now bottom. The mercenaries were all just, uh, you know, basically flagged right there, which is why Rokana has to have such a bottom lane presence right now. And, you know, picking up even this last Bruiser camp, that's going to be a pure blue map and the control for a quick Dragon Knight from Navi. Yep. Shrines are now available. They did not grab the top shrine. Did not want to get caught out, so they're just going to grab this Bruiser camp and then regroup as a team. Looks like they're actually just split pushing now. Zagara is pushing the bot lane and Tyrael is pushing the mid lane just to distract Rocket or at least put pressure on because Rocket, they can't afford to just stay at home and defend. They have to try and fight Na'Vi. They have 16. It's the only time they'll really be on the same talent level as Na'Vi are on 19. They're quite a long way away from their 20s. Freeze. Throws in a smite there just to gain vision and to do a little bit of damage as well. Scouts out and then Elduin smites away to make sure he doesn't get caught. Both shrines currently in favor of Rockat, but Na'Vi very spread out and Vala is grabbing that top shrine. It was very smart movements from Na'Vi. They knew that it was going to be a rush top, so they took bruisers. They started pushing up on him, got a lot of value out of that. Remember, they do need to hit that level 20 as, uh, as fast as they can. But with now everybody bottom, of course, you see JPL, he's into the top, and the rest of the movements are now more towards the mid, because Rook has, you know, with two of those shrines, we're looking for that capitalization for a Dragonite. We still have an entire front line with that gate at the fort. In fact, all three sets of gates and forts, I believe, are actually still up uh, for a Navi. I believe so. I believe that is true. There is. Looks like that... Uh... Okay, I want to just continue fighting around this area. They do have control of the bot shrine, but Sylvanas just left it and instantly Zagara moves in. And it's just harassment coming out from Na'Vi. They're just throwing in an ability and then running away. Throwing in an ability, running away. Shuffling their way towards the top lane right now. Vala in not a great position here. She does get slow. There's the stun follow-up, but Splendor instantly coming in to counter stun and distract this. Oh, Eternal looking for a sneaky dragon right here, but there's the Gargantuan. Will delay this Alpha Rip. Breeze taking a lot of damage. Wailing Arrow sizes him. He gets knocked up. Divine Shield keeps him alive. There's the more on three members. It is everyone except Muradin and Sport Billy. So much damage coming down. There is the strafe from JPL in the background, but he's all on his own versus everyone. He gets knocked up. He's still alive. He finally goes down, but he got a kill on Sylvanas in the meantime. Breeze coming in from over the wall with the help of Evernal. They take down Sports Billy in the background. Hasselobs is now caught between the entire team. He will go down too. Sokke realizes he's incredibly out there, but jumps into the wall, not over it, and gets taken down as well. And that is a full team wipe. And that spider will deny the Dragonite for a couple nah. seconds. But um, they finally are able to pick that up. A four for one, uh, sorry, a five for one in favor of Na'Vi. They are moving on to the core. And that will be GG. Na'Vi will be moving on to play against Team Liquid in the grand finals. The Mirrodin fail jump at the end was uh, yep. extremely <laughs> funny. But, you know, in the middle of that team fight, 
you, know, you said that with the 16 to 19, it was the best time for a fight there from Rokat, but 20 hitting that during that team fight, triple bolt, the hardened shield, storm shield coming out. It's just, it was too much. That was such a merry-go-round in and around that uh, that dragon area that the fights were just absolutely insane. And, you know, Navi just kind of showing that their comps are just a bit better here. Their executions, 18 kills to 4, 12 kills to 0 for the set of two games. You're looking at a 30 to 4 difference between the teams and just absolutely fantastic play to see overall and navi will be moving on into the finals against team liquid which is going to be happening same time same place on monday yeah and you were talking about the fact that they fought when that level 20 hit that was all due to like you said navi's pathing navi's position the dance that they did they moved straight to the mercenaries instead of taking the top shrine not forcing a dragon knight which would just waste their time because once they force a dragon knight there's no way rocket will want to take a team fight if they can keep rocket chasing them then they could buy time and just continuously move around, move to lanes, gather XP, and they bought the time they needed. Rockat were like, okay, we're the same, we're the same talents. We need to fight. This is the only time we can fight. And we were like, well, no, why would we do that? And just spread out, they moved around, they harassed, they stopped any kind of Dragon Knight, they stole shrines, they snuck around the map until they had 20, and then took their fight and won the game. Well, fantastic play from some of these uh, high rollers here in the EU scene, but as we said, when it comes down to it, Liquid and Navi are going to be going head-to-head -head here on Monday for the best of, I want to say, five finals. But you guys so. can find out uh, more about the schedule and the info if you hit us up, www.stormgrounds.eu. Uh, the Stormgrounds powered by Hitbox. Could this be the only one? Could the outpouring and support of the Heroes community mean more of these kind of fantastic tournaments in the future? It's a good question, which is why you should go over to the website and check these guys out. Support them if you can. Hit the various social media buttons because a lot of this will depend on, you know, do you guys like the content? Do you want to see more of it? Could we get more sponsors, more money, more teams? You know, the dream, Toucher, the dream. The dream indeed. And if you guys have dreamed about winning some awesome Steel Series gear, did you like my segue there? Because I liked it. Then you can go to the Facebook page of Steel Series and leave a post on their walls saying, I love hashtag Stormgrounds. You can go to Twitter and use the tag hashtag Stormgrounds or follow this stream to have your chance of winning a Steel Series QCK mousepad and a Steel Series uh, Sensei at Mouse, both of them Heroes of the Storm themed. Oh man, it's just such it's it's just such a great time to be in Heroes right now. There's tons of yes, tournaments. There's lots of money to win. Viewers even get opportunities like this to win swag from awesome sponsors. It's it's definitely a good time. I definitely enjoyed myself today, Tetchin. Looking very much forward to the finals on Monday. Yep. So am I. But this is all for us today. Thank you guys very much for watching. And we will see you on Monday for the Grand Finals.